It's been two years since I've given you folks an update on the kit that I bring to tasting menu dinners that I host, content shoots that I'm finally starting to do more of, and considering travel is more accessible than it has been since 2020, my bag has changed too. This is What's In My Knife Bag 2022, and thank you to Tillit for sponsoring a portion of this video. What is up folks, my name is Justin Kana. I'm a chef and creator based in Seattle, Washington. And if I'm being honest, as much as it hurt to see the streak die when I didn't make one of these in 2021, it probably would have been kind of boring. I was hosting a lot of online cooking classes from home. I was not doing any in-person events. And a lot of the gear that I buy now is based on when I travel. I like to grab stuff from a new city that I'm exploring, a new knife shop that I go visit. And because that wasn't happening, I wasn't picking up anything new. So I was pulling from some of my old favorites in 2021. But this year is pretty much the opposite of all of those situations. And so with all of these new updates, I wanted to share what's changed. So let's get into it. Use the chapter markers down below if you want to bounce around. So let's unpack this, shall we? This is Tillit's Chef Backpack. And instead of doing the features and then talking about what's inside, let's just discuss as we go. In the front of the bag, we've got this zipped compartment that opens and it has two sides. Let's start with this side. This one is the one with the zippered mesh compartment. It's a single zip along the top. I love that this is mesh because you can clearly see what's inside, but this is also not the cheap mesh that you'll sometimes get on like a hiking backpack or a suitcase. I can't promise if this is cut resistant, but it's definitely coated and it's not just fabric. So it feels like it's gonna be more durable over time. Starting off with offset spatulas. There are two in this bag. I have the town cutler offset. I rotate through these depending on what color I'm choosing. This is just a brown colored one. Additionally, I have my curved favorite fish cooking and you know, kind of picking up chips off of sill padded trays utensil. This is my curved custom bent uh, E. de Helleren sp spatula. I have this linked actually down below. I think they've made some improvements to their e-commerce infrastructure. Not promising where they're gonna be able to ship these, but I have this linked as long as the link is functional. Next up, a bench scraper. This is from Matt Fur. The reason I like these is because because they flex to be able to accommodate kind of pushing workflows. And then also the plastic is thin enough where when you scrape it along, it's like a cutting board, it doesn't leave things behind or it's not so thick that it ends up bruising things like herbs as you go along the cutting board. This one is new. These are from a gentleman who goes by the handle Dry Aged Fish Guy out of LA. And he did a special sale on these that he uses for intense fish butchery tasks. I think he described these as two Deba knives that just screw together. So you have the Phillips head and wrench tightening uh, mechanism here in the middle, which is just like way overkill. I love that. The handles are super beefy and the contact point is a piece of metal here. So you're not having the, the plastic handles clang together. You can just hear it. They just sound sharp, and I've just really been enjoying these across being able to butcher with them. Simple tasks like cutting tape or even snipping herbs. These are awesome. Maybe they'll make them in a different colorway. I think this is the only green item in the knife bag right now. Kuhn Raikon peeler. This is one of my favorite peelers of all time. If you haven't used one, you should definitely get one. Mine is red. Another one that hasn't changed. This is the Get It Right Mini Spoonula. It is held up. This is the same one that you've seen in other videos over the years, and it looks brand new. I believe I've covered this before, but this is the Lava Tools Javelin. I don't have the pro version. I don't really ever find myself needing a faster read speed on this. The fact that the folding mechanism makes sure that this is smaller than something like a Thermapen. This is a new addition to the bag. And this is because a farmer friend who I did a farm dinner with actually helped me put me on to this technique of when you're starting charcoal, you're starting wood and you're doing open fire cooking, the ability to have a fan. And I put this in my runner up in the 2020 knife bag video is because it kind of sucks to start a fire sometimes. Once it's going, you can just add more fuel to it. And so his tip that he gave me was to use these metal straws. Sometimes if you have like a rack on top of a grill and you're using a fan, a lot of that air just gets dissipated. But because of using something like this, you can get incredibly close and get a really concentrated amount of air into the base of a fire. And it just saves me time throughout a dinner. So this is definitely worth the purchase. Next up, the tweezers and a quick update on these. I have covered a couple tweezers on the channel that have had the kind of uh, brush painted or kind of like car painted painted colorways on them. I definitely don't recommend those anymore. And the reason behind that is because I've had a couple of pairs of tweezers, I think my red pair, and I think I had a blue pair as well, where the paint was like chipping off of them. And the question that constantly comes to my mind is like, that's either in my bag and that's fine because it just makes them look 
crappier and crappier over time, or it's like this, this paint is getting into the food somehow. And so the ones that I still come back to are my iron to adamant custom wood handled ones that I got done. And these are JB Prince tweezers. Almost all of the ones that I've seen from JB Prince are the ones where the metal is either anodized or colored from the jump. So these never chip or anything like that. They'll get scratches over time, but I just think that's wear and tear. Two more favorites from Town Cutler before we talk about spoons. There are two. This is the, their Olnea Oyster Shucker. I really love the ergonomic feel of this because the handle is so beefy. The way that they have had a little bit of a patina that goes into the edges, sharp enough to get into tiny, tiny oysters. But then at the same time, if I need to just kind of like chunk off pieces of like Parmesan cheese or something like that. Up next, this is also from Town Cutler. This is one of their custom cake testers. Because this does come to a genuine point, I keep this inside of a half cork just to make sure that the tip stays and doesn't stab me <laughs> by accident and or puncture the bag in any way. Not like I would really worry about that this has like super fabric is what they call it so it's pretty cut resistant and just all of the materials on this bag lend me to making me think that it's not going to kind of scuff or, or, or rip or wear unevenly over time because a lot of the tools that we're putting inside of this are ba are made of metal. This is just a little bit thicker than the Ateco ones that you're probably familiar with using and so if you're going to use this for meat cooking you just have to leave it in for maybe like a second longer than you would with something the, like the Ateco before you test on your lip. Moving on to spoons. The these are just the ones that I happened to have in the bag. The specific spoon that I use might change from event to event because I just like to swap things out and I have such a large collection that I just like to use different ones and give different ones love. But I want to talk about the different shapes and sizes of spoons as just kind of a macro view. So the first category is the large kind of basting spoon. This is for if I need to be like turning things inside of a pan, butter basting, taking large scoops of things, plating with large amounts of sauce or something like that, skimming sauces. I tend to use these larger bold, kind of comes to a tip, works with a quenelle, but it's still silver. And so this is a Lady Hamilton. It's just a larger size. Another category that falls in this same shape, I don't have it with me. I'll put it on screen right now. I left it at the place where I did a dinner earlier this week. I need to go back tomorrow and re-pick it up. This is a shocker. It's another Grey Kun spoon. But I think in my last video I covered, I had the perforated one that had a bunch of the little holes in it. They're slotted, perforated, large gray kun spoon is actually awesome for the fact that it actually if you're taking pickles out of jars if you're straining things that actually don't fall through the holes it s drains things super quickly so i don't like the solid gray kun spoons i prefer the kind of more tipped silver spoons but a lot of the silver perforated spoons that i have don't have the same hole capacity that the gray kuns ones have and so i gravitate towards those now i have it up on screen it's linked in the description i do have it i just forgot it <laughs> going down one size. I've actually really been enjoying these like Korean shaped spoons and the reason for that is because they have the length of an iced teaspoon. The reason I gravitate towards the Korean ones is because they have a larger bowl at the end. The silver iced teaspoons tend to have a little bit of a smaller bowl at the end which is cool it's nice to plate with those but because they were just designed to incorporate sugar in a tall iced tea glass it tends to not have the best capacity when you're plating you know larger service items and I feel like it slows me down to sometimes use an iced teaspoon. And so this is just a cheap stainless steel Korean spoon. And I think I got this in Seoul last time I traveled there. This is actually a dark horse in the spoon realm. And the last size, I've talked about these before. These are ones that I call just like deli weighted spoons. So you can put this inside of an empty deli and the deli doesn't tip over. That's the qualifier that makes me reach for these. This is a smaller Lady Hamilton, and that's because I know that I can get great small quenelle shapes out of this. And then this is a similar one from Reed and Barton. This is from the Hotel Mullebach, and this is just a similar one where I like having two different kinds. If I need to use these together to get a two-handed quenelle going, I can certainly do that. So all in all, that is five spoons that are usually traveling around with me at any point in time. If you're enjoying this video so far, please drop a like on this video. It really, really helps. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more gear videos like this and see me make another one in 2023. Actually, before we get into the knives, I want to talk about what I call the avalanche effect. With this bag, if you have stuff in the bottom compartment like I have here, when you go ahead and open this flap, it just creates this natural angle where the bottom of the compartment is higher than the top of the compartment. And so you naturally create this ski slope so that when you open this zipper, a couple of items, even especially smaller things if you're keeping them in here, just naturally kind of fall out. Things that I've tried with this is like you put a 
hotel pan on this side and then when you go to start your day you just kind of like prop it open like this and then you can take all the things that you need out and then once that's done you can just close it up and then the second piece is kind of a pro and a con and that is the fact that you can't the end of this bag is off of camera right now like when this is fully extended this is like longer than three feet long and so if you're in a small kitchen setup or if you need to kind of open your bag in the middle of a pretty condensed station setup, this is actually not the most ideal. But as I shared, this can kind of be a pro if this is standing upright and you leave this top zippered compartment open a little bit and the mesh pocket is open, you can just reach in, grab exactly what you need and this can stay upright versus having it be a roll that you have to open or something like that. So quick access wise, this is convenient if you have 80% of your stuff that you're using day to day, but let's say I keep my thermometer in here normally and I know that I can just reach in there, I can grab my thermometer and pull it right out. That's actually actually convenient. Okay, now we can get back into the knife side. I don't actually think I'm doing this right. I usually keep this fully clipped in, and then what I do is I take this secondary flap thing and I tuck it underneath it because the compartments that hold these are actually deep enough where I'm not worried about my knives or any of the stuff that I'm about to show you flopping around. So actually opening this up, I've got this segmented into two sides. Two thirds for knives, one third I'm calling for tall boys. Those tall boys include a microplane. I use the one that doesn't have a handle because I'm not doing 30, 50 lemons at a time. I'm not going through 10 pounds of Parmesan. I'm using this for maybe five minutes at a time. I'm getting a benefit from not having a bulky handle inside of my knife bag because this is super slim and I can just kind of tuck it into the pocket and it almost nests with a couple of the other things inside of this pocket. Next up, one of my favorites, I've covered this before. This is a short mat fur. I'm still waiting for them to make this in black, but if you're working with a, a sauce pot or a rondeau and you're starting off a bunch of vegetables for a puree, this is my go-to. Last up, a piece of gear that I've been ashamed to talk about in videos up until 2022. I wouldn't have even talked about these probably in 2021 is a pair of tongs. I'm sure the question is gonna come up of why, and so let's do a quick story time on these. When I was an extern at Per Se, this was back in 2011, my AM sous chef, the guy who would kind of give me projects, make sure that I wasn't screwing up, and he ultimately ended up being one of my first mentor figures was Daniel Calvert. He's doing incredible stuff in Tokyo these days, had a lot of success in Hong Kong, but I distinctly remember he had two pieces of gear that he despised, the slotted fish spatula and tongs. And it makes sense, nearly all of the prep tasks and the cooking tasks, the pickup stirring service could be accomplished with other pieces of gear. He was the guy who put me on to these spatulas. I modified this so that I could still continue to use this, but have a little bit of the functionality of something like a fish spatula. And speaking of tasks that you would normally reach for tongs for, we would gravitate towards using those longer tweezers. And looking back, if I had to analyze it, it does make sense. It was an instant signal that this was a kitchen that was not like other kitchens that you had worked in. This was not rough and tumble. We take our time, we have care that we put into working with our food. Using tools that you had to slow down with to use and you couldn't go as fast and messy with and haphazard when you're working with is a great way to get people to increase their skill and rethink their technique as they're going about their day. But for me, it left a bad taste in my mouth because it was one of those where I was young and impressionable. Someone was telling me not to use a piece of gear for XYZ reason. I'm sure you can think of something that comes to mind for you where an early person in your career gave left you with a piece of something that you still take with you to this day. But these days, I'm not cooking per se food. I'm boiling whole Dungeness crab. I'm cooking entire pork shoulders that are bone in over open fire. I'm turning large wedges of cabbage inside of saute pans. Sure, there are other more delicate and kind of like refined and elevated techniques that get done after the fact, but I just love the flavor and the challenge of being able to cook larger format things. And so considering that I've swung the other way, so to speak, it feels weird. I feel like a dork <laughs> turning a large pork shoulder with a pair of tweezers. It just feels silly. And so just like anything else in this bag, these are a tool. You can use them properly. You can use them haphazardly. So that's my rant on tongs. I think these can get incredibly gross and grimy because there are so many crevices and corners of these. So keeping them clean is absolute must, number one. Secondly, I think these can turn into a vice grip if you don't use these, again, properly, and you are a little bit too rough and tumble with these throughout your 
yesterday. I've come around to tongs, and so these comfortably now sit in my bag. These are Amco tongs, they are stainless steel, and they do have a pretty stable locking mechanism, which I really enjoy. Moving along, we're going to go into Bladeland with the Black on Black Mac Ceramic Honing Rod. This still has a place in my bag. When I first put this into this backpack, I, did, I was a little bit sad because I didn't think it was going to fit because... Man, they must have measured this custom to make sure that this piece of gear would fit. And it just kind of like touches on the crease where the flap comes down. I love the grit on this. This still continues to last over the years for me. Inside of that same pocket, I do have two knives. This first one is a little bird's beak knife. This might actually be a mushroom cleaning knife. I'm gonna put some B-roll up on screen of this close up. So if you folks find this anywhere, it, I can't for the life of me remember where I got this knife from. So for projects like turning, trimming, pumping, puncturing, peeling skins off of tomatoes. When I was just kind of playing around with different paring knives and thinking about how I use paring knives in the day to day, it's almost always up off the board. And so why not go for a more condensed paring knife that is cheap, it's ergonomic to hold, it's not something where I, if it gets beat up, I'm gonna be all that stressed about it. And I'm comfortable using that paring knife because this is my tinier quote unquote knife of choice. This is a utility knife, petty knife, whatever you wanna call it from Town Cutler and it's from their Olnea line. Yes, this is the same series as the oyster shucker. So these are kind of part of the same family and I kind of like that. There, there is a wood and black and red kind of theme and steel theme on, on my bag and I kind of like that it's just developed into that. That wasn't intentional. That's just how things have kind of landed as I've built this kit over the years. This knife is rocking a Nitro V stainless steel. It's got a iron wood handle, a black G10 liner, and a carbon fiber inlay. It's a 61 HRC rating. The blade profile is tall. The finishings on the spine are great. I love this laser etched wood detailing. I love the way that the handle flares because it's thin where you grip it so it feels super nimble but then at towards the the back it does get a little bit beefier and so butchery projects, shallot brunoise, that kind of stuff with this knife is great. I am a little bit ashamed that I don't have the sheath to go with this and so I just have a cheap Kangshan felt lined sheath that I keep this in and it keeps the blade pretty protected. Next up my chef knife of choice this is the Neox G Type Plus 210 millimeter Gyoto. It comes with a slight asymmetric bevel out of the box a black paper micarta handle. The weight is incredible. I did end up getting the custom Saya for this one. I know Ninox has a reputation for being expensive, but if you pick up one of these during one of Corin's twice annual knife sales, it tends to actually not be that much more than other makers. Everything I've ever gushed about in other videos about the way that Ninohi makes their knives, the steel that they use, the handle balance, the spine beveling details, all of it is included on this knife. I know I've said in previous videos that I gravitate towards more of a 240 millimeter length on this, but I, and again, quick story time, I have picked this knife up in different handle materials between the bone handle and the Corian handle and then this handle probably five or six times in person at Corin's showroom. I have just refused to pull the trigger. I've been back and forth and I, the, the question that comes in my mind is why does the 210 feel better to me? Every time I pick this knife up at the showroom, it felt like I was just working with an old friend. I would pick this up and I'd be like, Hey, how's it going? Speaking of 240, because I am not carrying around the Ninox slicer on the day-to-day -day as much anymore, I need a slicer in my bag, and so I'm going with the Togiharu Hollow Ground Sujihiki. I had the Saya for this knife customized by my friend Dazfi the Artist. This is an incredibly versatile slicer across butchery, vegetable prep, carving cooked proteins. It's not the hardest steel in the world, but that's why I keep the honing rod in the bag, and this steel has held up great over time. It's not something that's deteriorated slowly. The dimples are still intact. Okay, we gotta keep moving. So that's the knife and tool carrying part of this bag, but you might have noticed that there's so much more about this bag to discover. First, upon closing the bag, you'll notice that there's a little quick access pocket here, which is lined. It's more like the sunglass carrying part of the bag. I don't put sunglasses in here. I have three things that I put inside of this compartment. The first is your writing stick of choice. And for me, that is these Paper Mate uh, Inkjoy Gel 0.07 pencil pens. This is clicky. I will sometimes use the Muji pens. This is just whatever pen I happen to have and throw in the bag is what I use. Next to that is the Sharpie. And so I have two kinds in here. I think I ended up accidentally putting this one in my bag, but this one is a Sharpie industrial one. This is the pro kind of version. The thing that I like about it is that it looks different from another Sharpie. And so if someone else happens to walk off with yours, you know that yours is the one with the red text on the pen. Secondly, I like to have a multi-tool in here. This is the Leatherman Juice CS3. There's some Sometimes that moment where someone will say, does anybody have a corkscrew? 
And so I like to make sure that I am that person. And so having a corkscrew as part of a little tiny tool isn't gonna be the thing that actually ends up being a joy to use if you need to open 14 bottles of wine, that's gonna be a little tedious with this, but in a pinch, it actually helps. The other thing that this helps me avoid having to bring is that larger can opener that I've covered in previous videos because there is a can opener as part of this multi-tool. Again, if I need to open five number 10 cans, that's gonna be incredibly tedious with something like this, but in a pinch, if I need to open a can, having something that at least makes sure that I'm not having to take my Ninox knife and conk, conk into a, a can is, is helpful, and so I like having that. And then thirdly, if I'm needing to kind of cut a piece of tape, if there's a piece of twine that I forgot to trim, or even if it's just like something annoying, like a string on a shirt or an apron or my pair of pants, there is a scissors as part of this too. And so having that included in a multi-tool that's super small and I can just keep it here. The last thing that I don't have an example for because I'm fresh out is business cards. And so if I was to need to have business cards anywhere in this bag, I would probably put it in this bag. When I reorder them, this is where they're gonna go. Before we get into the big pocket on the top, let's talk about the sides. So the first one being, and I pulled this out earlier on in the video because it was heavy and it gets in the way when it's fully full, is the massive water bottle pocket that's here on the side of the bag. I love the fact that when it's empty, it stays cinched to the side of the bag, but because it's folded and has elastic inside, this is a 40 ounce water bottle. So shout out to Chase Reeves. He put me onto the Camelback shoot. This is a twist toppable water bottle. When you open, it's a magnet that keeps it secured. And then it also magnetizes here. If I were to tip this over, it would spill water. But if you're in the middle of service and you can just pick up the water bottle, flick it open, that's really useful. I love the fact that it has a super stable handle, whatever you want to call it. And again, the capacity is just ridiculous at 40 ounces. This is the largest water bottle that I own. And yes, it does fit comfortably inside of this bag, which is amazing. It does have a little cinchable carabiner strap here. If you were the type of person that wanted to put like a tripod in here, or if you wanted to have like when the when the fall winter season comes around and you wanna put your coat, like you have a packable puffy coat and you wanna just be able to st strap this in here and cinch it. If you have a bunch of other stuff in the main compartment, it's nice to have that external storage capacity here. Switching over to the other side, this is opposite the water bottle pocket. This also has a clippable cinchable strap here. So you can do something else on this side. Maybe this is where your coat would go. But we have this little hidden compartment down in the bottom. And what they advertise this as, what this is feature talked about and discussed is a shoe compartment. What's awesome about this is that it can be fully turned inside out. So you can bring this pocket all the way out and you can clean it. And so that's, and it's also a super durable kind of waterproof material. If you've ever had like a diving bag, this is the same, it feels like that material. Your shoes are definitely incredibly dirty. And so being able to put them in a pouch that makes sure that it doesn't touch anything else in the bag and that you can spray it down and wash it if you need to is nice. My problem is that, and some of you probably saw this on Instagram, when I unbox these, I'm on the Blundstone bandwagon now. And so the problem the problem that I have is that there's no way that two of these is going to have tried. I've, I've really tried to shove these in here and I can technically fit them. It's not the most comfortable. I have to basically like fold the tops of the boots down and I'm not necessarily comfortable doing that. So do I just leave this part of the bag empty? No, of course not. I am a content creator. And so this is actually my makeshift camera piece. So this is almost like I view this as like a little sling. The two pieces of gear that aren't in here because they're currently filming me right now is one, the Fuji XT with the 16 millimeter 1.4 lens on it. I also have the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on top of that that goes right in here because it is super durable and I'm not worried about anything getting scratched in here. And then the second piece that sometimes lives on the outside of this bag in the water bottle pocket, sometimes it lives inside of here, is my favorite mini tripod. So this is from a brand called Sirui. And then I also have a phone mount on the top from a company called Square Jellyfish. So the mounting clip on the bottom of this tripod mount and the bottom of my camera are both the same. And so this can get reasonably tall. This just comes with me everywhere because being able to put your camera on a countertop or on a chair and being able to film stuff with this is really helpful. I just turn the ball head down. So this turns into kind of an L shape. And then that makes sure that this can fit inside of the bag. I'm not always the best at shooting content during service. And I just want to try to get 
get away from that and be better at being able to capture things as they're happening. On the back of the bag, you probably didn't even notice it, but there is a laptop bag back here. This doesn't pass through for a luggage pass through or anything like that. This is incredibly soft, like fuzzy material. This is gonna just cradle any technology that you put back here. What I keep inside of this is the thing that I'm reading the script off of right now, which is the 12 inch iPad Pro. I keep the keyboard cover on this. This also has the Apple Pencil on it. And because I'm never editing video on the same day that I'm cooking for a dinner or something like that, I don't need anything fancier than this. I answer emails on this. I draw dish ideas on this on Procreate. I'm editing photos on this using just Apple Photos or Visco. I'm keeping track of tasks in Notion or doing budgeting in something like Google Sheets or Airtable. The iPad Pro does everything that I need it to do, and it's a little bit less bulk than carrying around my MacBook. And so that's what usually ends up inside of this pouch. Last up, the roll top, the clippable roll top of this bag, something that I didn't think I was going to enjoy at first. And I've, I, I've got some, I've got some thoughts on it. So when this is cinched all the way down, it does help make sure that the footprint of the bag stays reasonably small. It's not something that is ever going to feel like a smaller backpack because I, what I like to think about is like the knife bag part of this bag is your standard backpack size. And then you're adding this roll top thing on the top, which does make it feel like a large backpack. However, and I posted this in the unboxing of this bag in the Repertoire Pro community, that normally my setup for dinners is I will have a knife bag. So I'll have the stuff that has all my gear in it. And then I will have some sort of canvas bag, like a tote bag that I'll keep my apron in, my chef shirt in, a backup chef shirt in, my clipboards, my charger for my phone, a couple other knickknacks. And so as much as I liked having kind of a minimal setup for just my gear stuff, I would always have a supplemental bag that I would have to bring because there was other stuff that wouldn't fit in any of the other bags that I've covered here on the channel. But after switching to this bag, everything just goes in here. So when it's cinched all the way down, it's pretty contained. But when it's open, this is a magnetic clasp on the top. First up, I am firmly in pouch life. Across everything I carry, not just this backpack, but the pouch that comes with me is this one. This is the tech pouch from Peak Design. This includes chargers and cords and adapters for literally every piece of tech gear in this bag. Plus it has an external battery pack that would just be able to power my phone for like five days. This includes a supplemental light source. This includes a tiny little notebook just in case I need to write down my contact info for some someone or take notes on something. I won't bore you with the specific products that are in this bag. I basically do what you're doing right now. I watch other tech YouTubers review stuff and I buy what sticks. Next to that, an extra chef shirt. I am still rocking the white H2H Henleys. These are three quarter sleeve. The reason that I like these is because when I put them on, they're ready to go. They're not short, short sleeves so that I have to worry about burning my forearms and they're not so long that I have to just start my day with like rolling my cuffs all the way up. These are breathable. They're lightweight. They're easy to wash and they're cheap enough where I can have a couple of these in my bag at any moment's notice if I spill spinach puree on myself. I've talked about the Blundstones. I've talked about the shirts and I've talked about a couple. There are a couple other changes. Comment down below if you want to see a updated uniform video because that's all also at a critical mass where I have enough stuff that's changed where I can share it if you folks are interested. Last up, I think the only thing that's remaining in here is an apron and oh, would you look at that, a Tillet apron. I like this series a lot. I, it's linked down below in the description and the reason that I like it is because the straps on these, the things that you tie are, they're thin, which is not my favorite, but they are stretchy, which is actually very convenient. The other feature that I like about this line is the fact that it's pretty easy to get on and off because it has a clip here. And so this just comes on and off, which I haven't really seen on that many aprons before. Usually these are just a static strap that is sometimes adjustable. And then the second piece is this little hidden pocket on the inside. And so I'll tuck my phone in this sometimes. Sometimes I'll keep an extra apron in the bag. Sometimes I won't. Having a backup in here is good. And also because these are my only three baseline pieces that I keep inside of this massive pouch on the inside, I can add extra things if I need them. Because there's so much space in this bag that it's a luxury that I haven't had in the past. I don't keep my coat or my hat or anything else inside of this bag. I have more than enough space in here. To touch on a few other features of this bag that haven't quite come up yet, the straps are incredibly comfortable. As you can imagine, this bag gets heavier than any other loadout that I've built out on the channel. And it's not that it doesn't feel heavy, but it doesn't feel cumbersome because of the structure and the material quality on these straps. To tell you a little bit about how I tested this, I took a 20 plus hour road trip and I've taken this bag across the entire county, King County of Seattle. It's incredibly durable. And talking again about a few other pieces of feedback, this bag because it's black on the inside, it turns into a black hole because I know that there's probably only at max four items in here. If I reach my hand in here, I kind of know exactly what I'm touching. But if you're the type of person that has 
granola bars and chapstick and pens and cords and charging bricks just kind of like thrown inside of this, it can probably be frustrating because you look in here and there's no light and it's also just black on the inside. And so you can't exactly see what you're grabbing at a moment's notice. Links to everything that I covered in this video, if available, are linked in the description. It's right below the like button. Please don't forget to do that if you're gonna go check anything out. If you have questions on this bag, how it carries, materials, any questions that I can help answer, please don't hesitate to leave them in a comment down below. Thank you so much to Tillit for making this video possible. They're also helping me give away one of these knife bags to a lucky subscriber. This is gonna happen probably about a week after this video publishes. So keep an eye out for that in a pinned comment down below. Whew, that has been what is in my knife bag 2022. It's not just a new bag, but there is new gear inside of this that makes it so that I can find joy and satisfaction. I'm not annoyed on the little kind of details on my day to day as I'm working. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much as always for your attention. My name is Justin Kana, and I hope you have a good one.